been known for being famous for my smile, but I know someone who is gonna stop and listen for a while. Now she sings about wisdom and she sings about life, makes the world a better place, takes away a little stride. Now if her songs bring you pleasure, don't forget that it's a treasure in a vessel of clay. You know a heart can be broken by careless words spoken, it can wither away. So speak life, speak love to the one who brings us her song. Just speak life, speak love, it'll carry her along. The fragrance of her songs Like incense on a breeze This should be more of what the world sees The wisdom of a child Who's never been trained to fail Like the bank of love Sent us a check in the mail It often seemed to be sifted like sand in the wind Hey, let's make an exception Let's block that deception Lift our hand and begin Speak life, speak love To the one who brings us her song Just speak life, speak love It'll carry her along a short message for Anna and the Graceman family and anyone else that might benefit from it. I have edited in a little humor with the help of my two studio assistants here. Uh, Daffy is 22 years old and Moki is 16 years old. So enjoy. Here we go. Hey, I had some friends that used to joke and say I really knew which, of a, which end of a piano to blow in. Uh, I guess that flute part proves it. So, Anna Graceman, it was an honor to meet you at the Palazzo, even though I really wasn't feeling well. I was fighting high blood pressure, hepatitis C, thyroid failure, and remnants of a brain injury. I wasn't sure I sat beside your mom, so I froze and didn't say anything to her. Mrs. Graceman, I apologize for that. Now, Anna, I've had something on my mind since I first saw you on AGT. 
Then also I saw a comment on one of your early videos that said, now nah, you be careful dear. And I thought, no, that won't work. Don't be careful, be wise. Your parents have given you a good start at that in contrast to what's been a pretty unwise nation. I hope you don't mind if I use this second song for you as a starting point to share some things that I've been researching about gifted people. Anna, you and anyone your age probably knows why not to do drugs, not to be drunk, not to put yourself in danger physically, emotionally, sexually, financially, but still so many gifted stars fall into and even die from one or more of these things. And it's not just the ones who had a troubled childhood. Don't you wonder why? I mean, do stars have a staff meeting one day and say, you know, all this fame and money and freedom, this is just getting boring. Let's mess it up and lose it all just for fun. Probably not. So what's up? Well, some recent brain mapping studies shed some light on this. They show that gifted people's brains are wired very differently. More neural paths are dedicated to their talent and less to things most people have to deal with. Sometimes to a rather extreme degree, they're often less skilled at daily organization. They're nearly always less skilled at love relationships, even though they write songs about them. That's because it's a very different brain function to write a haunting melody and beautiful words about love than it is to do the daily things that make it work. Most super talented people are pretty awful at it. I mean, think about it. Their songs makes it, make us feel warm and fuzzy, and then we watch them stumble in and out of one heartbreak after another. Then we throw them into the environment of fame, being told you're amazing all the time, having less privacy, less structured work schedule, diet, sleep schedule. All these add to knocking your perception out of focus. When your focus is off, you don't know it's off. It's your perception. I mean, no, no magician in Las Vegas would have a job if this wasn't true. We can all be fooled by trusting our perception. The obvious perception of many stars is, if I'm gifted at music, then I'm gifted at everything. When it's likely the opposite is true. If you're gifted, then you're probably weaker or more vulnerable in some other area. Now, add the pressure that you're seen as a role model. And it's pointless to say, I don't want to be one. Celebrities affect our culture more than politicians, educators, or spiritual leaders. Uh, yikes, that's an impossible responsibility. Hey, uh, maybe celebrities should have to qualify for a license. They find you dancing drunk in the road with your Ferrari upside down. They don't just suspend your driver's license. Your celebrity license goes too. Or let's say you get a huge fan base as a child television star. Then lead them all into Stupidville when you turn 18. We revoke your celebrity license and give you a special visa for Iran, Russia, or Somalia. All right, I'm kidding. Miley fans, don't write me hate comments. But what if we could talk to Jimi Hendrix now, or Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Robin Williams? You know the list. These are gifted people with great potential, but they didn't finish well. And speaking of Jimi Hendrix, the music, is the, the music of the 60s is where I learned to play. Some of the best music ever, but it's still a fact that most of us were stoned all the time back then. At 17, I was at a party where a guy got arrested trying to lead a pack of trees out of the park. <laughs> Hilarious, yeah, except a lot of the world that you see now is what we created. I saw a news story this week listing the 50 most influential people who smoke pot. You only need to look around to see the results. You can be a good person, a gifted person, very good intentions, and work very hard. And you'll still get unexpected or wrong results if your perception is off most of the time. And now all you potheads out there that are ready to jump in with comments, look, I know that clean pot is not very harmful physically. But if it didn't alter your perception, you would get your money back so you could buy some that did. A lot of people are doing stuff a lot stronger than pot. But getting back to my point, I spent nearly 40 years studying stars that came out on top over the long haul to see what they had in common. And I mean stars that didn't lose their life, didn't lose their money, didn't lose their marriage, their sanity, 
and knew the joy of really making a difference in the lives of others, uh, I found three points, and they're pretty clear, pretty consistent, and I suppose partly controversial. All right, point number one, you, everybody knows this one. Make fame a tool, not a goal. You can't base fulfillment on the reaction of strangers who get just as much entertainment when you fail as they do when you succeed. The emotional roller coaster from that will break you. Look, there's a lot of famous people who are not great people. There are a lot of great people who never get famous. To be great and famous, that's rare. Anna, I believe you can be one of them. You have a calling on your life and a purpose. Don't fear fame. Just be wise with it. Point number two, again, pretty simple, pretty obvious. Keep people around you who love you, but are not afraid to say when you're wrong. If you're only around people who say you're amazing, you are in danger. The best way to do this is to stay close with your family. Even when it's time to try things your way, keep them in the loop. How many people got to be 18 years old screamed, ah, thank God I don't have to listen to these stupid rules anymore and then they did something really stupid because they never had a plan other than being free from rules. And I know that's not you. Wisdom will define who you are. But part of wisdom is who you have around you. Point three will be on a different video. Yeah, I know, but it's the most important, the most controversial. It will bring out the trolls and the haters. And I will say that I don't think you can consistently do the first two points long term without knowing the third one. So, here's a closing thought. Many will think I'm way off base to be saying any of this to Anna. You know what? I hope you're right. But, based on this new understanding of the brain of gifted people and the obvious tendency for personal disaster in the entertainment business, it won't hurt to be aware of this stuff. Anna, I hope I live long enough to see you winning Grammys. And I want to see that smile always a part of your life and music. This is my way of saying thank you for being the most inspiring and gifted talent I've seen since the 60s. If even one word of this helps keep you or someone else from any unnecessary battles, that's good. I mean, life will always have battles, but some of them are a waste of time with no winners. The only prize for some of them is having, having this as your motto. When the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. There's a better way to live. So, be looking for the second part of this message. And no, it won't be another two years. I already have some songs ready. My health is improving. So all the best, and thanks for watching.